Welcome, everybody, uh, to today's Winning uh, with Innovation breakout track. Our next session is The Real Edge in EDR, Protecting Endpoints and the People Who Use Them. Got two amazing speakers to introduce you to today, James Irby and Gilly Moeller of Acronis. James has been with Acronis for six years now, analyzing the data protection and cybersecurity software requirements of Acronis partners and their clients and recommending appropriate solutions. You'll often find James uh, providing product demos to potential partners and customers, hosting product knowledge and technical training webinars, and hitting the road to educate the world about Acronis software product, uh, products and solutions in person. Gilly is the director of product management at Acronis, responsible for our security products portfolio, including advanced security, advanced security with EDR, advanced email security, and advanced data loss protection. Uh, before he joined Cronus, Gilly had been at Niatron for over six years, leading all activities at the Niatron R&D Center in Israel. Gilly holds an executive MBA from Tel Aviv University and a BS with honors in IT engineering from Ben Gurion University. Over to you guys. Sometimes my wife watches these crime shows, like NCIS, you know, the whodunits, which means sometimes I watch these crime shows. And they always seem to happen the same way. There's an event that takes place, and the team rushes in, checks out the crime scene, talks to witnesses, and starts collecting evidence. Similar to what we do in the digital space, now, with the scenario in a bank robbery, for instance, that bank's going to have security controls in place to make sure that that robbery is not going to happen. Maybe security guards, CCTV, time lock vaults, alarms. They're using that layered protection approach to make sure that if somebody does sneak in past that security guard, that another layer is in place to prevent that intrusion. And we use similar security controls in the digital space, like multi-factor authentication, URL filtering, anti-malware, and firewalls, just to name a few. But what if there's gaps in those controls? Or maybe they are in place, but they've been bypassed. That's where detection, investigation, and remediation become critical, which leads us into our topic today, endpoint detection and response, the real edge protecting endpoints and the people who use them. I'm going to go through a quick agenda here for the session. We're going to do an intro into Acronis Advanced Security plus EDR, look at a live demo of the solution, and follow up with a couple of other items in the wrap-up section. I want to go ahead and bring Gilly on stage to uh, give us a little bit more information on endpoint detection and response. Gilly? The threat landscape is becoming more complex. Remote work is creating new risks. Data can be anywhere, much harder to control. And indeed, according to our cyber threats report, 80% of the companies report, reported that were attacked in the second half of 2021. All of them had an AV which failed in 57% of the attacks. The majority of MSP tools are not designed to cope with modern threats. Complexity makes it ineffective. Too many vendors, too many tools, a lot of manual work. This complicates managing your services and impacts your ability to react quickly. What is an EDR? 
EDR, Endpoint Detection and Response, gathers and correlates different events that happen on an endpoint level. Its purpose is to identify advanced threats or in-progress attacks that organizations of all sizes face by gathering and analyzing benign and suspicious alerts that happen on the endpoint level uh, and to enable to detect the incident, contain it, conduct investigation, and remediate and respond. So what's driving the adoption of EDR across organizations? Modern threats are becoming more frequent and complex, requiring advanced security controls to combat. Without such, like EDR, organizations are under increased risk of attacks. In addition, service providers are blind to threats that bypass other layers. With current average time to contain a breach being month and the high cost of a breach, businesses of all sizes need effective controls to remediate and recover from breaches with ease and speed to minimize the impact of business. Compliance is another driver for EDR. Most of regulation are imposing strict implement requ requirements like timelines of reporting security incidents. Many of regulations mentioning EDR as a must-have solution. The graph shows uh, the volume of samples versus complexity of each uh, attack. The first three columns in the graph show a high volume of samples as for attackers, it is cheap to create variants of malware from existing malware. As a side note, and this has been mentioned at the keynote with Candid, uh, RAS, Ransomware as a Service, is a subscription-based model that enables affiliates to use already developed ransomware tools to execute ransomware attacks in a revenue share model. Anti-malware solutions block the first three categories of malware successfully. Last part of the spectrum, where the cost of attackers is increased and their techniques become more complex, prevention layers are blind. EDR solutions unveil such complex attacks. Why are such attacks complex? Because some of them are using zero-day vulnerabilities nobody knows about and for which the attacker pays a lot of money on the dark web. Some of them are using legitimate software uh, that exists on the workload, also known as living off the land, so no malware sample is needed. Challenges. Existing EDR solutions have not solved all the challenges, though. Cost and complexity. We use innovation to make EDR accessible for SMBs and mid-market organizations, enabling them to finally combat advanced threats with efficient technology, scalable to their needs and budget. Protection across the NIST framework. This is achieved through a single integrated platform across identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover, to enable partners to ensure true business resilience and continuity, continuity. Channel conflict and MSP enablement. Service providers nowadays compete directly with vendors for talent, client relationships, and margins. Acronis is an SP-first company and does not compete with its partners with MDR services. Moreover, Acronis enables to launch and streamline detection and response services without high staffing, training as cost requirements through automation and innovation. Rapid incident analysis and response. This enables service provider to cut incident analysis to a few minutes with automatic AI-driven interpretation of attack to respond more rapidly with just a single click. 
Compliance, I've mentioned that before, and this was mentioned also in the previous uh, uh, sessions. Some regulations like GDPR require to report breaches within 72 hours. We empower service providers to report on breaches with the speed and confidence they need, guided by the MSP class EDR. So, this is our solution, advanced security plus EDR. So, <clears throat> in, in the keynote led by uh, CEO and uh, Oleg Melnikov, our CTO, uh, we mentioned what we did in the past few years. We had uh, lots of investment in the product offering in general and in the security in particular. In May 2017, we launched our act active protection, which is our anti-ransomware layer. Full anti-malware anti protection was launched in May 2020, advanced security in March 2021, and coming up now with EDR early access program that will be re released until the end of this year. During Q1 of 2023, we will re release the general availability of EDR. So, to recap before the demo, Advanced Security plus EDR is the market-only MSP class endpoint detection and response that can detect and respond to advanced attacks that sneak past other endpoint defenses with pre-integrated identify, protect, and recover capabilities as will be presented in the demo. Acronis has been evaluated as a top performer by multiple independent evaluation, proving the technology efficiency and efficacy. The engines evaluating these tests power up our EDR technology. Time for a demo, show time. James, please come back to the stand. All right, thank you very much, Geely. <laughs> that provides a, a great um, foundation for us to get started with what I'm about to show here. So we actually, yeah, we've got a couple of slides first. Um, one moment there. So before we jump right into the UI, I wanted to set the stage for what we're about to review. As you may know, a large majority of malware is delivered via email. And according to recent reports, phishing emails account for roughly 80% of security incidents. And what you're seeing here is an example of a phishing email sent to the user Pam with a hyperlink and a an detachment. And it looks to be coming from the internal security team reminding Pam to update her password and to check out this attachment for how-to instructions on doing that. And for our scenario today, Pam went ahead and opened that attachment, but a Word document didn't launch. She only saw a couple of black boxes pop up on the screen and then disappear. And that's where we're gonna pick up in the console. But before we uh, switch over, Let's go through a quick overview of this flow of the demo. We're going to look at enabling a Cronus EDR in the protection plan, moving into the detection of the malicious event, investigation of that event, and then some options for response and remediation. All right, so I'm logged into my account here. We're on the dashboard. I'm going to move down into the plans. You can see we have a few plans already configured. And I'm going to take you into a fresh plan where you can see a collection of modules here. And we're going to go into the threat defense module, where if you're familiar with the Acronis protection plan, you're going to see the anti-malware settings that you're used to. But there's a newer option here for endpoint detection and response. When we click in, we've got a summary across the top, 
and the uh, related components bulleted down below. We would just enable the setting and close out of the plan. I'm going to save it. But before I jump out of this plan, I wanted to give you a side note that we intentionally disabled some of the prevention tools in order to allow this attack to flow through so we have more to show in the investigation. Let's go ahead and move over to investigating this malicious incident. So we're going to move into the protection view. Here you're going to see some widgets across the top that are tracking things like threat status, incident severity, and different tactics that have been discovered from these listed incidents. The incident that we're going to be looking at today, you can see, is uh, currently not mitigated. When I select this incident, the panel to the right opens with an overview where you can see the incident trigger. This is that attachment that Ms. Pam launched unknowingly. And currently, the investigation state is in investigating. We could change this if we needed to, but we'll leave it as is. Now the assignee is currently the admin. That's my account. If I had another individual who was managing this incident, I could reassign it here. Down below, we have some workload details. Her workload name, Scranton, the IP address, the operating system, and some other useful information there. Now at this point, this is looking pretty interesting. So let's dig a little bit deeper here. I'm going to click on the investigation of the incident at the top. And this is going to take us into a nice overview. You can see the map. And I'm just collapsing a couple of things here quickly for uh, simplicity. And before we get into the details, I wanted to explain the scope of this attack. This is a simulation of an attack carried out by APT-29, whose typical attacks involve spear phishing, like the one that we saw with Pam. And in these attack stages, you can see that this malicious file, once launched, does establish connection to command and control through a non-standard port over an un to an unknown IP address. That same malicious file then uh, spawns processes to collect data on the system and then exfiltrate that data out through that existing connection that was established. Now, this is a larger attack, and it continues to go on, you know, capturing more data, exfiltrating, making more connections. But we're going to focus on this first phase, just for sake of time. Now, this beautiful map here in the center gives us a nice overview of the attack. But the real power with this is taking those collection of events and automatically interpreting that in a human-readable form in this attack stages on the left. This helps with quickly understanding the event, so gives you the ability to respond more quickly. Let's take a look at these stages in a little more detail. So starting with the execution, we know how that happened. And then we go into this defense evasion technique. So user P. Beasley launched the malicious file, and she was tricked by this masquerading technique. Now, if you're familiar with the MITRE ATT&CK framework, that's what these stages are aligning with. And if I wanted to learn more about the defense evasion, I would simply click here. And it's going to open a new tab where I can read more about this particular right-to-left override that was used um, in the attack here. You can see it, it's going to flip that file name to make it look a little less threatening as a dot .doc as opposed to a uh, dot .scr. Now, not only is that helping to gain the trust of the user, but it could also be performing that masquerading technique to evade any existing security tools on the system. Moving down, once that file is launched, you can see the connection that was made to that command and control server uh, over that non-standard port to the IP address here. Then we have the collection of data. You can see it's wrapping these different extensions into drafts.zip. 
And then what do you think happens next? They're going to take that drafts.zip and shoot it right back out through that existing connection. Now, what I'm interested in is that initial malicious file. So let's continue the investigation here. I'm going to select that file, and the panel to the right opens, where you can see an overview. This file was found on 10 other workloads. It is malware, and malware activity is the verdict, with the following objectives. Execution, defense evasion, and command and control, which we just talked about. Moving on down, we do have a reputation check. You can see a direct link to virus total. If I select this, it's going to open a new tab, similar to going into the MITRE.org. But it's taking us into virus total, where we can see other reputable vendors in the space who also see this file as malicious. Continued, continuing on down, we have the process name, process ID, and the username who's launched the process. So after this malicious file is launched, let's take a closer look at that collection of data. So I'm going to click right in here to that PowerShell script. You'll see it moves me over in the map, taking me to those scripts that have been invoked. And if I go to this suspicious script, you can see that not only are we, is this script looking for those different types of file extensions, but also keywords or phrases in those file names. And it's taking all of that sensitive data, put it into the zip, and then as we talked about before, it's going to send that then through that existing connection to the command and control. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the response actions that we can take. Clicking over here, we have two sections, one for remediation and one for prevention. For remediation, we have the option to quarantine this process, roll back any changes that were made by the process using a local cache, similar to how we work with the active protection against ransomware. Kill the process or the process tree. And then at the bottom, with prevention, if this did happen to be a false positive, we could have it added to an allow list for one or multiple plans, or all of our plans, with our comments that we've added. And same type of option for adding to a block list. If it was a true positive, we could add this detection to the block list for any of our available plans. But instead of taking these actions on an individual process or file, Acronis has developed the smart remediation plan that you can see at the top here, where we can remediate the entire incident as a whole. So I'm going to click in here. We'll leave this one set as a true positive. And if we scroll down, seeing those remediation actions, it's very similar to what we just saw with stopping the threats, quarantining these threats, and rolling back any of those changes. But these are related to all of the processes or malicious files for the entire incident, not just that one selected piece. So we can check the boxes through here. And if any of these remediation actions happen to fail for some reason, we also have the option to recovery, recover from more workload, recover the workload from a backup, or fail over that workload, that critical system, into the Acronis data center using the disaster recovery functionality that you can see here. Now, these last few sections here, rolling back the changes, recovering the workload from backup, failing over the system with DR, those are very unique capabilities that Acronis is bringing to the table as far as remediation actions that we can take as part of this EDR solution. A similar action would be patching the workload. You know, with those protection plans, we have the options for vulnerability assessment and patch management. And that's what you're seeing here, is if that system, the initial access, was due to an application being unpatched, maybe the, there's a vulnerability there that was exploited, we can have that system automatically patched as part of this smart remediation plan. If we select remediate at the bottom, you can see it's going to change our state of the incident to closed and allow us to provide some comments there. 
And then it's going to start at the top, working through these actions, and successfully remediate the entire incident. This is where I'm going to take a step back from the console. We've got a couple more things that we want to wrap up with in the slides. So to be mindful of time, if you do have any questions on anything that you've seen today, whether it was within the slide deck or the demonstration, please come find us at the Acronis booth. We'd be happy to continue the conversation there. Back to the agenda, we've gone through the overview or the intro to Acronis Advanced Security plus EDR, along with a demonstration of the solution. And now we've just got a couple more items to wrap up. To summarize, Acronis Advanced Security plus EDR is purpose-built for MSPs. And it allows you to detect and respond quickly to advanced threats with minimal investigation efforts. And through integrations existing in the Acronis platform, we offer unique capabilities for identify, protect, and recover. If you remember the reference earlier to those crime shows, no one wants to watch a show that the bad things prevented before it even happens, or maybe the team solves the case right when they get there. That'd be for a pretty short episode. But in the cyber protection space, that's exactly what we want. Thank you everyone for your time. We appreciate everyone flying in from all over the globe to be here. It means a lot to us. I always want to say a few words about the Cyber Foundation. I'm sure you've heard about it through other presentations. But this is one way that Acronis does our part to help make the world a better place, like the schools initiative that you're seeing here. We help to build schools in impoverished villages around the globe and provide technical equipment for education. Again, thanks everyone for your time, and have a good rest of the day, and enjoy the event.